Me. Hey all, we're here at the Springs. We're here with Cody, Cody Campbell. Campbell. I knew that. I thought I was introducing okay. myself. So here we're at Cody Campbell and we're here with his whole family and he's impatient so he wants to talk. So we're just gonna let him talk. What's your question? So we're here talking about- We need to talk something else, be quiet. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about sway bars. So hey, Cody asked me a question last night when we were around the campfire and it was a great question. And we wanna talk that through and give you guys some diagrams and some figures that we can show. So Cody, we're here to talk about sway bars. We went Correct. in the truck, truck is good. It was a lot of fun. We got to talk to Marines. We got to go places we shouldn't. We got to go in some mud. It was fun, but sway, sway bars. What's your question on sway bars? So I asked Wait, him last night. How do you determine what bar you want to run in the front versus what bar you want to run in the rear and how do they interact together? Okay, so how do you determine what bar to use? So it's, it's, it's a wide question. There's so much availability. So the first thing we need to do, to do is discuss what a sway bar does. There's, we call them an off-road sway bar. They're also called an anti-roll bar, an anti-sway bar, lots of different things. But what they do is they connect the wheels with basically a torsion spring. And they connect the wheels with a torsion spring. So when you lean on this wheel, instead of it just being free spring rate, rate only to fall over like that, it uses the spring and the weight on the other side of the vehicle to kind of keep the car stable without just diving to whichever side you're putting the weight on. That's what an anti-roll or a sway bar does. We're gonna call it a sway bar from now on because we're off-roaders and that's what we call it an off-road, but that's where we're gonna start. So here we are with the truck. This is a Camberg Kinetic 2015. It is a 2015 chassis. 20, 2015, yeah, 2015 chassis. It's updated. It's, it's updated with all the new stuff, new tire configuration. Uh, we just did the shocks, we put some miles on them. It works really good. So I wanna talk about the front sway bar first. So the front sway bar, there's a few pieces of information we need to know when, when we're figuring a sway bar. We need to know working length right, working length, and I'll, I'll draw out a diagram of working length so that's easier to measure. We need to know bar diameter, the working bar diameter, whatever that is, because we're gonna figure the torsional rigidity of that particular torsion spring. And then we need to know um, radius rod, uh, or I'm sorry, torsion arm length, that's the bar arm, we need to know that length. So come in here and look at this arm, I wanna show you something on this arm, down here, there's a, a sway bar arm and it has, a, it has a bend in it and it's bent to clear the tie rod at full stuff and that's fine, it doesn't affect the bar at all as long as it's made strong enough. But one thing we can't do is when you measure that bar, you need to measure that bar from center of bolt to center of bolt in a straight line. Because if you don't, you're gonna get a long, a, a measurement that is longer than, an, than the actual working length. So that's the working length of the arm, center of bar to center of bolt. Okay, so we're working on a front A-arm suspension. The sway bar um, has the, the radius, or I'm sorry, the sway bar arm, and that connects here. But since the arm connects to this, the lower control arm so far away from the center of the tire, we also need to figure this distance in the ratio for the force on the wheel. So the arm is not just the arm measurement we want is not just the arm from here to here, but it is also the arm measurement from the center of tire to um, where the bar connects. So that means we're, on this one we're gonna have, and these are gonna be approximates because I can't measure terribly. So that's gonna be nine and a quarter, and then we're gonna go nine and a quarter from where it, it, it uh, hits to the center of the tire, and that is going to be an additional 21. So nine and a quarter by plus 21 is the actual sway bar arm length. And so that's how we figure that on. on and we're looking for wheel rate. We're not looking for force at the end of the, of the arm. We're looking for wheel rate because we don't care about anything else. All we care about is wheel rate for, of the sway bar. So that's the front. And now we'll move to the back. Oh, wait, have any questions about that? I do have a question kind of unrelated to what you just explained, but how would the front sway bar be affected had we mounted it to the upper? Air, um, control arm. Not much. There's a little more jacking force with it on them because force of it if it's mounted to the upper A arm, but it's really in the big sloppy travel that we have off road. It's 
incidental. So is it arguably more. irrelevant where you it's mounted it? irrelevant where you mounted it. It's, it makes some difference, and if you plot it out with the, with, um, the geometry really precise, you can get a few pounds different this way or there, that way, and it will affect the jacking and the, and the brake diving forces slightly, but in reality, we don't have enough data on any of the truck to be that precise. We're really trying to get in the ballpark with starting points, and then we go do what we did today and realize eh, we don't like that because it lets the car dive too much in the, in the braking or whatever, and then we'll fix that. So now, back of the truck, and this truck has what we call a rear sway bar. And the reason we, I call it a rear sway bar is it's mounted behind the back tires. Uh, there's, it has a little bit of significance. One that would be called a mid bar would be in front of the, the rear tires. A little bit more difficult to place and have a long enough arm and radius rod to not invert. And we'll talk about inversion of this of the sway bar when we do our marker drawings and, and diagrams so you know what inversion is. But um, the only real difference is the way the vehicle dynamics work is the rear sway bar helps the front tires and the front sway bar helps the rear tires. And how they do that is if you were to go into a corner and pick up the gas and you lifted a front tire way in the air, you can't do anything that with a, with a front sway bar, but you get a, a, a rear sway bar and that keeps that front tire down by doing what we said earlier where we use the spring and the force of the tire pressing down on one side to hold the other, to hold down the diagonal opposite corner. It's only a, a big deal, it's, it's not a big deal, it's only slightly better or worse to be behind the axle is a little bit farther from that wheel that it's, that it's um, helping to control. In front it's a little closer so you can have a smaller sway bar and do the same force on that wheel and a smaller sway bar is actually a better compromise generally because you want to have the, the small sway bar that does the job because when the sway bar gets too stiff it keeps the independent action of the rear or front tires from working and off-road we never hit the same bump at the same time. You're always slightly different bump even though you feel like you're going them together it will be slightly different and so if you don't have that articulation and that compliance side to side you can get a car that just feels like a skateboard and bounces all over the place. A stiffer sway, uh, sorry, a softer sway bar is better at making the truck compliant and track straight down the road. But you need, it, uh, need enough sway bar to have it not roll over, you know, on acceleration and lift the front tire or feel like you, it, it, it's going to roll over when you're accelerating because you should pick up the, the throttle in the corner and it should sit down and go rather than try to roll over. It's an odd feeling when you don't have enough sway bar. You felt it, yes? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so here we are, same condition. We need to know working length of the bar. And again, it's not necessarily the overall length because the overall length of this bar is probably something in the realm of 50 to 54 inches. And then the working length will be where the full diameter necks down and we, that's the working length. We need to know the working diameter, which is diameter of the bar in that working length. And then come in a little closer as you can see. So radius arm length here is center of center of radius uh, bolt the center of bolt now this one since it's not measured ma mounted directly to the axle we could actually if we we're being too technical we could show a little more to the center of the axle but it's really not necessary with the rigid connection it's going to have pretty much the same force so we would just call this good enough if we had those measurements so that's basically the that's basically the rear questions. Any questions? Yeah, I got a couple of questions actually. So first, I wanted to know because our truck's a mid cell truck versus a real cell rear cell truck, how does um, the sway bar? How is it affected depending on where the fuel is in the vehicle? So, well, so mid cell truck, need, you generally need, need less sway bar because the polar moment is not so wide and so rear biased. And one that's rear biased, when you pick up the throttle, it has a tendency to squat more and all that. And you really generally need a, a bigger bar for a rear cell. Uh, mid cell generally a smaller bar will function because it doesn't have that. It doesn't have as much inertia back behind the tires. Does that make Makes sense? Makes sense. 
So now, what, how would it change the characteristics of the vehicle or the driving um, characteristics? How do we flip the bar and put it in front of the axle and it did it the be, other way? It could be exactly the same characteristics, but we would use a smaller bar and lower wheel rate to get the exact same effect. Okay, and that, that makes sense. that would cause the truck to be slightly better in the oscillating mogul type, type bumps, um, more comfortable, and it would also with the smaller bar, but it would still be able to not squat just because of the location in the chassis. Basically the force is just, there's less lever for it to act upon, so you can have a smaller right. spring to do the same job. That makes sense. And then I got one more for you. Okay. So I see on a lot of trucks, um, on the sway bars, they add a bracket on the end of the bar that has several mounting positions mm -hmm. to uh, move the radius rod. Okay. Why do they need that adjustment? Or what does that allow them to do? It's, it's a fine adjustment of the force of the bar. You have to be careful with that. This is a good point that will bring us to a different mounted sway bar that we'll talk about, but assuming it's a bar that's like this, this arm, but you have a bracket and you have three or four holes here. It's basically, you can calculate that wheel rate or the rate of the, of the arm on the axle. You can calculate it by just changing the dimension. If you, so this we're gonna call a 24 inch bar, but if there was a mounting point an inch, an inch back this way, we'd call it 24 inch arm, or a 22 inch arm, or a 21 inch arm. And that would be just, you know that the longer the arm, the less twist, the less it twists the bar, so the he, so the less force it has. Does that make sense? No. Right. Back to physics class. Yeah, first <laughs> principles, right? Yeah, right. Peanut section. So when you only have a rear bar and not a front bar, how does that affect how the vehicle steers? Okay, so the question was, if you have only a rear bar and now not a, a front bar, how does it affect the way the vehicle steers? Well, honestly, it probably steers better, but what you can get is that lift of the inside rear tire, which makes the car, so when you get on the brakes to get the truck set into the corner, you can lift that inside rear tire, which really unnerves some drivers. The fix for that, and on a Can-Am, when I'm driving a Can-Am, I'd much rather have no front sway bar, not dive the corner hard, brake a little early and pick up the throttle and drive through the corner, because you get through the corner, you, get, you exit the corner, slow in, fast out. You go slower into the corner, but you exit the corner faster, which means at the end of the straight, when I'm slowing a little earlier, I'm way faster than the guy who has mashed the corner tried not to tip over, and then picked up the, the throttle late. Make sense, peanut section? <laughs> so we're gonna talk about a sway bar that is mounted mid, mid or truck, a mid sway bar, and, but it's mounted way up front here, which is good for the things we talked about earlier on the closer to the, rear, the front tires. The problem with having it way up here, and these bars usually have a short arm from the sway bar and then mount somewhere to the act to the trailing arm here. The problem with having it this extreme, this extreme, is when the bar's way up here and the arm connects here. Um, this has something to do with the wheel rate, but the length of this arm doesn't have very much to do with the wheel wheel rate because it's going to have a transfer of force through that short arm to the trailing arm. But then there's going to be this long distance. To the center of the axle also added so rather than thinking that you have an eight inch arm which would be really high forces applied right here by the time you get them um, motion ratioed out and multiplied way back here or actually divided not multiplied you're you're actually figuring whatever the the diameter of the bar whatever the working length and uh, of the bar is and a rate, a, an arm of 50 inches or so, so it ends up meaning a, needing a very heavy bar that's way up here. So if you're gonna do a mid bar that in my experience works better, you generally mount it somewhere here-ish. Unfor not unfortunately, but you can't kind of do it on this truck because of the, where the fuel cell is. Not a problem, you just have to make, at some point in a truck you have to make everything fit. So there's not goods or bads, there's just things that it causes and things you have to do. So it really didn't work to put it here and reach back and do that. So putting it where it is, it works. And then you just have to do the appropriate adjustments to, to the force of the bar. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about that I just remembered as we're back here. 
So come around back here. If we're looking at this arm, this sway bar arm, we come to what we call the radius rod. Best canary. Hi guys. Hey. Hey everybody. This is my dog. This is my dog, come here. And she's good dog. Okay. So if you apply force through a, a lever like this, and you apply it to an R, a, a, a radius rod like this, and you are not at a 90 degree angle, like this one is not quite as a 90 degree angle. If you apply one pound of force down here with this bar to a 90 degree angle, you get one pound of force through this radius rod. But if the angle's like this, you get exactly the, the multiplication of the sine of the angle the sine of that angle times the force, the force applied goes through here and it is always less than one to one. So at 70 degrees, you may only get, you only get about seven tenths of a, of a pound when you're applying a pound to the arm, you only get seven tenths of a pound through the radius rod. So that's something to also think. Also, not a bad thing if you can apply enough force with the arm to do what you think you need to do. Maybe. Peanut section, get in here, peanut section. So. Wait, 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 she has to, this, everybody, this is my friend, Jason Campbell of Camberg, and he is here with this truck and his kids and his family, and we've been spending some time bouncing through the desert, so the peanut section, because he's wearing brown. <laughs> oh, man, golly. <laughs> so, question, if you had a vehicle with only a rear sway bar, yes. and then you added a front sway bar, yes. would you then have to readjust the diameters of the bar because of adding the front bar? Well... Probably, because typically what you end up doing when you only have a rear bar is you go it's too stiff, because you're not happy with the way it acts, acts, and so you just go stiffer, stiffer, stiffer bar. Now, that's not a bad thing. You have to make the truck work with what you have, so you add a stiffer bar, but typically you end up with a softer bar if you have one front and rear, both ends. Like typically on the front of one of these car, these trucks, we're having a 5 8 five eighths to three quarter bar and it's 24 to 30 inches long. And by the time you multiply it out, the wheel radius is 30 to 50 pounds. And this is a guess, right? 30 to 50 pounds. And in the back where usually, we usually have a 50 inch bar and so it's probably inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter or so, but fairly long arm. We're probably in the 100 to 150 pound range at the wheel typically where you'd be 150 to 175 with just a rear bar and it just depends on the driver all this stuff is there's i had no drivers that i work with that don't want to sway bar anywhere <laughs> and love it to lay over and do that because they love that action i know drivers that want the stiffest sway bars and they want it to feel like their porsche going around the corner now also have you seen i'm sure you have but over time i've seen where they had sway bars attached to the rear end housings with links that went to the back side of the link so the bar was attached to the rear end housing? Yeah. And then it had little arms and attached link. Was there much of an effect difference? It's a different type of bar, yeah, that you basically are not, you're basically leveraging off the geometry change in that particular joint. And so typically they have way less travel and they need to be significantly stronger, shorter or bigger diameter to, to act, act in the same force. Again, I don't know what the force should be because I don't know the truck, but I know we ride in one and it tries to lay over on its side, turning out of the gate, well, we know we probably need more sway bar. <laughs> Does that answer your question? I think so. Yeah, but there's another one. If you mount the sway bar to the axle and then the arm comes forward or something and it comes up to the chassis, then the force is not different at all as long as the sway bar has the same pivot as it has now. So there's lots of different ways to skin the cat, you could say. As long as you get a cat skin, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, also we're talking about sway bars uh, again, and I wanted to get some stuff down on my plastic table whiteboard, <laughs> just so we could see uh, kind of the things that we were talk that we've been talking about in the demonstrations with the truck and the other cars. So uh, let's talk about uh, sway bars when we're measuring for sway bars what the different terms mean so so you know so the first thing we're going to draw us out a sway bar pardon my art I'm not a good artist so the first thing we have is a sway bar arm okay and that's where the bar comes through it and there's the sway bar arm 
the heim is here, pivots through it like that, so we'll call this the arm. Okay, and then we have a sway bar that will come through like this, and it'll be attached with splines here, and then it will neck down to whatever the working diameter is, and then it will neck back up, and it will, you know, neck back up and go through an arm that's like this, and these arms, unless you're circle track racing, are generally equal length. So the arm length is this measurement here to here, and let's just call it 17 inches. Doesn't matter, but just 17 inches. And then let's talk about the working diameter, and that is, the working diameter is from there to there is diameter, okay? So working diameter is that diameter. And then the working length is where it necks back up, and that is working length. So working length, that's here to here. Working diameter is this diameter. Sometimes you do have a bar that is the same all the way through, and so the working length is from inside of arm to inside of arm, because it shouldn't be twisting at the splines. If the splines stick past the arm and it's the same, diam the same diameter all the way through, that's actually where the most of the twist happens, and it's gonna break, so you shouldn't do that. You should always have a neck down. Okay, so here's a couple. Last night we saw a truck and we're looking at the arm from this direction, let's call it, and it had the heim here and the arm came and then it had a hitch in it like this and then it went up like this and went down and, and that was where the sway bar was right there, the bolt is. And remember the working arm length class is on that is not to follow the curve but to measure here to here, straight lines, straight across from them. Remember that, so that if there's any sort of hitch in the arms where it has some sort of some sort of a bend in it to work around a tie rod or whatever, we have to make sure that that you measure straight line from bolt to bolt or center of bar to bolt. So that's that. Another thing you get on arms occasionally, we'll draw another one down here. We have an arm that comes out like that and has a bend in it to clear something and a bend in it like that and it comes out like that. Right, so then how do we measure the working length of that bar, right? And then the bar goes through it. So how do we measure working length of this arm? It's still the same measurement. If there's a bolt that goes through it here, and this is the center of the bar, it's from a straight line out here to a straight line here. It's that measurement. Don't worry about the bend. Don't worry about any of that. I've seen a few, um, versions of this that are that I don't like and we'll just draw that again really quick bar right you got the bar like this we're next down it's all good you got the arm the arm goes through got the bolt through it here and then they just bend it out to here like this and then the bolt goes through it here so it's just got a bend in it and that's okay but it's not ideal because you have not just a twisting force on the sway bar but you also have a bending force or a bending moment. And what will happen with these kind of arms when they're like this is the way they twist and bend, they'll either wear the splines out, happens a lot, or they break the bar right there. So that's not a good idea. If you're going to have to reach around a bump stop or reach inside or do something, do this parallel. So the parallel bending, all of that bending moment happens here and here so it doesn't happen at, at, at the actual torsion bar, sway bar. Okay, so the math is pretty complicated on these. So what we're working on on Altec's website is we're working on a sway bar calculator. And we'll have it out, a sway bar calculator, so it asks you for the working uh, length of the bar, the working diameter of the bar, um, the inside diameter, and if your bar is solid, that's just a zero, but if it's a hollow one, like they use in circle tracks, track, it would be whatever the diameter of the hole through the bar is, but we don't see that very much. And then the arm length. So that's the easy things to measure. Um, and what this gives you is the, what that will give you is the force at this bolt right here, whatever that measurement is and whatever all those other parameters are, it will give you the force at that bolt. And there are times, more drawing. I'm not good at this. If you have a trailing arm, sway bar, um, 
arm, bolt, radius rod, and then the trailing arm for the truck runs down like this, trailing arm, and then it's attached to the axle right here, and the bar hits the trailing arm and the shocks are in like this. The measurement like we said, like we talked about in the other video, or the other part of the video where I was measuring the actual truck, is center of bar to center of axle, that. So you'll say it's 42, 40, 42 inches, that's the measurement because as that bar pushes here, that force is still not multiplied but divided by the motion ratio of from here where it contacts all the way to here. So you have to keep that in mind that how the bar is going to be very big if you have that much room between the, let's get rid of that, that bugs me. If there's that much air, uh, lever arm to the actual axle, it's going to reduce the force a great deal. Um, uh, so that's one thing you need to be careful of. And then here's another thing you need to be careful of. Let's just say you have a bar that does the same thing and this isn't here, but the arm comes out like this and connects like that. So that's yet another reduction in force. And what I mean by that is the equation is the force, the force applied here times the sine of this angle and the sine of this angle and that is the sine parallel to this and the sine parallel to the angle of this straight line and that's going to be a reduction in force if it is not 90 degrees to, the, to this plane it's always going to be a reduction no matter how where you move it it's always going to be a reduction less of a reduction going this way because you reduce some of the some of the motion ratio going toward the axle and more of a reduction going this way if I have, were happen to do this more of a reduction but it's always a reduction, so keep that in mind on that type of uh, type of sway bar arm. Another one we talked about uh, la uh, with the, the Cambergs was we just got sway bar, we got arm, we got arm, and we got hole one, hole two, hole three. What does that do? Well, as the bar, we're going to assume that the radius rod is straight off this one with the heim and the heim onto the axle. So the, that means, means when we do working arm length, it's the measurement from here to here. And then if you, if you just move this so that it is angled to there like that, as long as it's one inch, it's probably not that much of a reduction because there is some sign to that angle now. So that it's going to be this, the force from here to here. Car coming in, we'll just wait for a second. So the force from here to here times the sine of this angle and this angle. And so that's going to be somewhat reduction. And then as it gets leaned in further, you have to be careful because that is yet a bigger angle. So the sine becomes greater. Uh, um, and so the actual numerically lesser, but the sine becomes greater, which mean which means the reduction is more and more as the angle gets. So you're kind of, even though you're going stiffer on the bar, because that force is going to be greater here than it is here, but it's redu reduced some by that, the sign of the angle principle, which doesn't allow the same one-to-one -one transfer. So if you're going to have a bar connect in one place or have multiple adjustments, it's really good to have multiple adjustments here so you can do some cool things then you can go straight 90s or you can go crosses to get maybe mid forces or you can go crosses this way or this way to get other combinations so with one bar you can have some really good slight uh, reduction or increases in force which makes you able to do a little bit more with one bar um, sign of the angle Let's try to do a, let's move down to this side of the whiteboard so I can draw a little more. I'm going to draw an uh, A-arm front. This is going to be, this is going to be cartoon-like. So here we go. We get the tire. We get the spindle attaches here. And uh, with the spindle attaching here, there's some sort of heim and the lower A-arm here. And then there's the upright that does something like this, right? And then we have the upper A-arm that attaches somewhere like that. 
okay and then we get a sway bar that comes in and the arm is maybe somewhere here uh, let's say the arm comes in right here with a radius rod and attaches here but remember if we look at this from the side it's going to be this small short arm that comes out like this and attaches to this to the a arm with a short radius rod and that a arm is going to be you know across this way with the spindle out here where, where my, my hand is where the black part of the pen is so you have to measure from here to here and then again from here to center of wheel to get the real uh, motion ratio or the real arm length to get the wheel rate you don't have to really you can, the wheel rate is important and I try to figure it so that I can know when I change a bar what the wheel rate is doing but if you at least figure force at a given point and don't change the point you can still have that empirical data that, get, that allows you to keep track of your changes so you're not guessing you know you've gone you know two pounds more 20 pounds more 100 pounds more uh, and and if it's here and you know there's a reduction a re reduction coming out of the wheel it's fine because it's going to be that way anyway as long as you don't change this but when you really need to do the wheel rate is when you start attaching in multiple positions or multiple length arms and that kind of thing I think that's all for sway bars right now um, if you have some questions about sway bars again we're going to be uh, we're working on the the calculator and we'll put it on our website and that will give you an opportunity to go and if you need to just give us a call and we can run the numbers for you as well so thanks for watching and I hope you learned a little bit about sway bars Yeah. All right, tell me when you're ready. So what am I doing? Am I supposed to be personality? Am I asking you questions? Like, where are we going with this? Well, you're going to, uh, we're going to say who we are. And you're going to say, who, I'm going to say who we are. And then I'm going to say, so we're here to talk about sway bars. So what's your question on sway bars? And then your question was the same thing you asked me last night. How does the front and the rear bar work together? You're going to say, how do you know what the right sway bar is? That's what you said Are we starting time. with what is a sway bar? Is that where we're starting this at? No, we can say just how do you know what the right sway bar is? Okay, this okay. is going to be hard for me. <laughs> it's not. So who am I? I'm Cody and then do you, is that it? Is that all who we're do doing? Who do you want to be? Okay, oh, you ready? Here we go. Here we go. Hey all, we're here at the Springs. We're here with uh, Magoo and what's your name? Cody. Cody who? Cody Campbell. Okay, we're going to start that all over again. No, I like that. That was fantastic. <laughs> Would you call me Magoo? We can do it if we want. No, I love yeah, that. Yeah, it's good stuff. Here we go. People laugh. Because you get a little, a little comedy in I it. I know, we got it. Oh, so your pressure's getting to him. Ready? They're not getting to me. That's exactly what he's talking about. Oh, it's in my pocket. All right, honey. <laughs> Show me on the show. How the uh, mud I... with the sway bar? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, they drag on the ground. <laughs> they keep mud off the, the sway bar. You need to well, you, he's the focus. I'll just come in for Q&A. Yeah, Color guy.